Hey guys, so today we're going to review a offering memorandum for a multi-tenant retail strip center that's in Delray Beach, Florida. Um, it is a property with three tenants, AT&T, an ice cream shop, and Chipotle. Right away, you can see Chipotle and AT&T are the national retailers and cream. I've not, I haven't heard of them, but even if they are, if they've got multiple units, um, that'll be fine, but they're not a Chipotle level or AT&T. Um, I get, uh, let me preface this by saying that I'm not going to go over every little detail of this uh, or go through a deep cash flow analysis, but I'll show you some of the things that I look for when I'm reviewing it. So um, here right away, $8 million price, cap rate 5.5%, double, double net lease structure, uh, weighted average um, is going to be about three years left. Um, right away, cap rate 5.5, that's going to be very low, How, low in terms of what today's market provides. Um, you can get just basic savings accounts at over 5% right now. I think I've got one at 5.41. And, um, and, and just as of this video, it's currently August 2023, uh, a 5% cap rate. I mean, it's, it's tough. Uh, it's tough. However, with that said, you've got Chipotle and AT&T who are national tenants, so they're going to command very low and very aggressive cap rates. Um, the buyers that are buying these are probably going to be 1031 guys uh, or, um, or or buyers who just want to buy real estate for tax savings per or tax advantages, uh, but that's going to be saved for another video. Um, let me see here. I like to look at uh, what's going on in the area. I mean, right here it's showing that there's um, 277 units next door. There is a multi-tenant pad uh, to the 277 units, which is good. Um, retailers always want to be next to um, a, a high population, right? And the thing is with Chipotle, Chipotle, Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, um, those three tenants specifically, um, if you are a business owner or if you are just looking to invest in shopping centers in general, uh, or or any type of income producing asset um, that requires uh, people to be nearby. Those three particular tenants, they um, they are very deep when it comes to demographic research. If you want to just more or less ride on their coattails and follow them wherever they're at, you're probably going to be in good shape because they're not going to open it open up in some you know boonie location that's not going to make money. So keep that in mind as you're looking around. Investment overview, uh, man, they're asking for a thousand bucks a foot on this one. That is so expensive. Um, so expensive in, in a sense where it's just a stabilized asset. Sure, when you buy it, you've got tenants there who are more or less going to guarantee to pay rent. But again, five and a half percent cap rate. I mean, savings rates are that number now. Uh, retail, 7,400 square feet, almost two acres of land. Um, the building is beautiful. I mean, what's there not to like about it? You've got the, uh, the higher... Um, I don't know what the construction terminology is, but when these national retailers, they don't like the old school 1950s, 60s, 70s type retail centers that are really low. They like high ceilings. Um, the, the I think it's called the crown molding or the pepper cat. I forget what it's called, uh, but there's a certain type of construction that they look for. Uh, these aerial maps, okay, aerial maps are amazing because it shows you right away down here, 41,000 cars a day. There's no number here, which means it probably sucks. Oh, it does suck because that's a dead end. So there's no traffic there. There's even a warehouse back there. So yeah, that's not a traffic uh, type area. You've got the subject site here with, wow, a lot of parking, which is nice. There's a Whole Foods next door. Okay, I see why they're asking for um, the 5.5% cap rate. Starbucks across the street. Remember what I talked about? Chipotle and Starbucks, you'll find a lot of times they'll follow each other. Whole Foods is a big player. Uh, you know, you want to talk about top of the food chain type of grocery store. If you want to be next to Whole Foods, um, that's where it's at. So um, location wise, it's strong. Kind of surprised there are some warehouses back there, but that's only one warehouse. So I'm not going to discount this whole area. Uh, looks like it's got a lot of apartments back here. You can kind of see them up here. Um, there's a tennis club, 236 units, 277. Um, yeah, you definitely have some strong population in the area uh, looks like they're zooming out a little bit more here you've got let me see here approved redevelopment okay so they're actually redeveloping this this because right now if you look up here it's a pet smart and some other retail someone shut down right there but it looks like 
um, that's going to be a approved redevelopment. They're going to be doing um, apartments there, which is awesome. Um, up here, see, this is kind of far. I wouldn't see now that these guys are just throwing it in here to make it look good, but that's that doesn't really affect this particular area here. You know, the the Publix and the Marshalls, the big boxes over here. Yeah, that's not that doesn't really excite me for this area. If I was looking at this area, this over here doesn't really matter to me. Um, let me see here. Next, okay. it's... I found this on the web for this area to see. Gosh, Siri, why are you interrupting me? Siri, off. All right, there it goes. Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, so we've got... What else we got here? Um, uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean... You got more. All right, you've got Whole Foods. Five again. Five Guys is another tenant where they uh, they're very particular about where they go. Five Guys, Starbucks. I like it that they're right there. Whole Foods. Um, over here, there's a Target that's not too far away, but um, you know, I'm neutral about that. Uh, here's uh, the plans. While well, they're really pushing this 277 units, huh? That's the approved plans. Uh, it's a beautiful apartment complex. It's beautiful. It was uh, one, two, three, four. So you've got ground level and four floors above. I hope they have elevators. Um, I used to live in an apartment like this that didn't have elevators <laughs> and only stairs. I was in really good shape at that time. Wouldn't be able to do it now. Uh, next is going to be a rent roll. So this is going to be the meat and potatoes with any any of these OMs you look at. You want to look for the rent roll. And the rent roll is going to tell you the story uh, of the money. It's going to tell you the financials in and outs of the property. Um, current rent, rent per square foot, they're paying 50 bucks a foot, 55 and 60 for that area. Where are their cams? Uh, rent increases. Is this their cam? Sometimes it's not crystal clear. Sometimes the cam's not even on here because it's really understood, hey, whatever the expenses are, the tenants are going to pay back. Oh, here, it says on the next page. That's why I clicked down. Your expenses are 20 bucks a foot. Oh my goodness. That might be the highest cam budget I've ever seen in my entire life. You see down here where it says operating expenses and $20 per square foot. I'll get there. I'll get there. Let me, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to skip ahead there. So with this rent roll, what you're looking for is just trying to get a understanding of uh, just a big picture overview of where the, the property sits. For example, when I'm looking at, I see, okay, it's a $55, $60 market. Delray Beach, I'm not 100% um, familiar with it, so I'd have to pull some comps to see what they're paying around there. But for the building being new construction or new work construction, you know what? I don't know what year it was built. Let's see if I can find that real quick before we dive into this. I was built in, it doesn't say. Interesting. Is, that, is it because it's an old building or what's the deal? Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I would imagine it's a newer building. It looks pretty new. But anyway, newer buildings or just prime locations, uh, when you've got good tenants, they're, will, they're willing to pay the rent. They're willing to pay the rent if it makes sense. So in this case, you've got $55, $60 a square foot. Lease days. Chipotle's lease, see, it started. So this is increases. So they were there since 2008. Okay, so this building's over 10 years old. Definitely older than I expected. Um, they were here... 2008 lease ends 2028 with no options remaining we're currently so there's about you know five years left lease term five years left i mean that's not bad but for five and a half cap rate i'd rather go buy a single tenant building for that so i'm already not really digging this because if they were here for another 10 years or so okay you know maybe that'll work but five years that's really whatever it's the ice cream place ice cream place has one year one and a half years left They've got two five-year options at fair market value, which is always a dicey one. Good for the landlord, bad for the tenant. Good luck to them trying to get a renewal done. Um, this is in the landlord's favor. So if you can, you as a landlord, if you buy, you're like, hey, the market's $65 a foot, and you put it in front of them, and then, you know, let's say they have bad representation or they just don't know what they're doing or fill in the blank, they're just going to get eaten alive. And if they can't make it work at whatever fair market value is, they're going to be out. Uh, next is you've got AT&T, their lease ends in 2025, one three-year option. They're flat all the way. They've got a 10-year increase. Cream has 3% increases. If you look, by the way, there's a little asterisk here. So it was annual rate increases are higher of, oh, okay, 
So it's fair market value. So the CPI or 3%. So if a CPI or 3%, CPI, if it starts cracking away at like 5, 6, 7%, then that's going to be your increase. But if it's, um, uh, you know, if it goes down to 2% or whatnot, then it's going to be the 3% because that's going to be the higher. So moving on, um, that's the rent roll, okay? The rent roll gives it a lay of the land. What, what I'd like to see, just, just so that you know where my personal attention goes to whenever I'm looking at it, the rent per square foot, if let's say we've got, let's say hypothetically, right? You've got at t at 55, you've got Chipotle at 55, and let's just say hypothetically cream was at like 40 bucks. That's what I want to see because that tells me that, hey, well, there's that I want to see, see them at 40 bucks, and I want to see an expiration of, let's just say, one or two years with zero options remaining, okay? Because that would tell me that, hey, if cream moves out, I can put another tenant in at like another 20 bucks per square foot higher, per 20 bucks per square feet higher, um, and uh, it just gives me the opportunity to value add. For this one, every tenant, assuming that the market rents at 55 or $60 a square foot, it looks like that's just max value. The value's already been squeezed out. There's nothing more to really do there. You know, you're buying it as a stabilized asset and you're just going to be done with it. And with this building too, we didn't even get into, hey, hose the roof, forms the parking lot. If you look at the parking lot right here, just this picture alone, you can see the grays and the whites coming in, which means that it's getting close to needing to be redone. Um, operating expenses here. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier. The uh, operating expenses are 20 bucks a square foot. That is very, very high. Uh, the taxes and insurance are eating this property alive and taking their lunch. So you can see property taxes at 69000 property insurance 36000 That's very high. Man, I feel, you know, poor tenants. But that's a poor tenants, but then, you know, they're making money. I mean, Chipotle's probably cranked away, what, you know, $3 million a year, $4 million a year there. Um, and the other tenants, hopefully they can keep up to pay this operating expense. But, um... But, you know, you want to know what the operating expenses are. Sometimes when, I, when I'm looking at the property expenses, too, you want to make sure, for example, the um, something that catches my eye, not to dig into it later. I, I don't have enough information. I don't have enough information to dig into right now. But if you look at CAM income, 17 bucks a foot, but operating expenses are $20 a foot. There's about there's a two dollars and 19 cent differential there. Right. You got to figure out why. Because CAM is supposed to be fully passed through. Why is there a $2.19 differential? What's going on? Uh, this says, year one performer reflects 2024 start. Okay, so maybe maybe this operating expense here, the $20 a square foot, is based off of uh, post-sale, meaning next year's um, assessment of what expenses might be, which is a good thing. They're supposed to do that. Uh, but to, but but regardless, twenty dollars a square foot is really high for operating expense. But um, but you know every market is going to be a little different. This one being by the coastline, uh, maybe that contributes to their thirty six thousand dollars a year or their almost five dollars a square foot for insurance. Because um, you know here around Tampa, Orlando, and such, I mean we're using you know two bucks a square foot as of today. Who knows where that number is going to go to? But two dollars is pretty average. So yeah, you're talking double triple um, for property insurance costs over in Delray Beach. Uh, lease abstract and property details. This here just gives you the details of the leases. Um, sometimes there's like some nitty gritty things in here that you're going to want to know about, such as, um, you know, some, sometimes there might be a right here, first right refusal, uh, insurance coverages, HVAC, for example, HVAC, you want it to be a tenant responsibility. If it's a landlord responsibility as an investor, that's going to suck because now you got to You've got a you know twenty thirty fifty thousand dollar bill that might be looking at you uh, sometime down the road when you own it. So having the tenant responsible for that is going to be important. Um, you know landlord responsibilities, rent increases, options. The lease abstract gives you a nice snapshot of what is normally you know called a fifty page plus uh, leasing agreement. This here gives you everything in one shot. It's like a little summary. Movie trailer versus a movie, right? So. So now, um, you know, same thing here. This is the least, least abstract for cream, and this is the least abstract for at and I saw a least abstract yesterday where it shows that there's additional income coming in from a Panera Bread because Panera Bread pays additional rent based on how much money they're making <coughs> uh, in sales. So that was very interesting. Uh, here we've got more property photos, 
And that kind of wraps it up. Here they start, you know, this is all cookie cutter stuff. They start talking about, oh, why Delaware Beach is growing and our employees and, you know, our, our uh, you know, not employees, but like our, you know, where the employers are and how many employees they have and blah, blah, blah. Um, current demographics, one mile, three mile, five mile, all that. Uh, all very useful information. But when you're looking at it, um, even in towns where they're in the boonies, right? I've seen towns where it's one of those, you know, let's just say if I'm driving from here, Tampa, all the way to Atlanta, there are going to be some some areas that when you exit, all they have is just one intersection. But that particular intersection is just booming and going gangbusters. There's just a ton of traffic. And with those particular properties, um, demographically, it may stink because there's no one living there. There's no there are no jobs, whatever. But it's just in such a uh, sparse location that all the traffic stops by there. Like, for example, Bucky's is a big one. Um, you go, you know, you drive from here to Atlanta. There's a Bucky's there. You're just going to pull over because it's a huge store and you can get whatever you want. And it's awesome. So anyway, that's how I would look at this particular uh, OM uh, for this multi-tenant retail strip center. Uh, hopefully you got some value there. If you have any questions or if there's things you want me to touch base on, uh, let me know. Thanks.